Hey guys, today we have a little bit of a more interesting project that doesn't fit the normal uh, things I work on around here. This is a steering box out of a 1965 Mustang. This is a family member of mine's and he wants to put electric power steering on it. Um, because cars of that era didn't steer necessarily good. And uh, so here's what we've got to work with. We've got this paper, which actually looks 3D when you look at it through the camera. Wow, that's cool. And this little drawing here with some measurements and things. That's what they want it to look like. I'm going to do it slightly differently because that's how he wanted it done. This is milled clear up into this uh, housing. And in order to do that, you have to take that apart. And there's a whole ton of loose needle bearings and roller bearings in there, or needle bearings and ball bearings in there. And you never get them all back in. So he said, don't take it apart. He said, just leave a nice little radius out there. and It'll be stronger that way. And if you look at the picture, it doesn't even go on that far. So why bother? cutting it that far if I don't have to. So I'm gonna get that all wrapped up with some tape and then I'll get it on the mill. And uh, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to cut this because I gotta cut a flat and then turn it 180 and cut a flat and those have to be parallel in order to allow this to slide on to that end. So there's a set screw goes in from the side and one from the top. And those have to nest on there like that. And it's going to be a slip fit. But I want it to be relatively tight, but not like thousands work. Like, I don't know, 15 to 30 would probably be fine. But uh, that's what I've got to hold on to is shaft and a box. I gotta hold on to the shaft because that's what I'm cutting on and the box is gonna get set on some boards probably. Um, but I'm only working on this section here, which it won't be too bad if I can hold it out here, block under this, kind of like so, but I would have that uh, you know, up where it belongs. Then I can cut here and no problem. The only thing is, then I have to cut this off and check fit that uh, universal joint on there. If it's not right, I don't have anything to hold on to. So I better get it right the first time or this could be a long, interesting process. If you think this is interesting, stay tuned. I do occasionally get into some interesting projects. Another thing here, because we don't have dimensions on any of this stuff, we have how much I have to mill off, but we don't have how long of shaft is left. I'm going to show you guys something called scaling. Now, we don't know what scale the drawing is. A lot of prints I get when I'm at work or whatever, they will say, you know, this drawing is a 5 to 1 drawing or this drawing is a 1 to 5. And that's a ratio of how big the part is on the paper compared to what it actually is. So, what we can figure out is that shaft on here... It's hard to see through the camera there because the page fades off. It's right about a half inch, but we know it's really not a half inch. It's actually about three quarter. So we can do some math here. So that is showing that's also about a half an inch. So I need to be about three quarter on here is where that's going to stop. So I can do some drawings and calculations and figure out where I need to machine on here based on how big that coupler is and how much I want to leave back here. So with that, I'm able to get, that's where my shoulder needs to be. I'm actually going to start a radius there and actually blend it out a little bit. And then uh, that's where the end of the shaft is going to end up. So I can clamp pretty much up to that as long as I can get the cutter 
diameter out past that. I guess I'd only need to get half the cutter out past that, but I'd like to get a little more. So, that's that. Now let's get it set up. So that there's going to work. I'll try it. I don't know that I need to strap this down at all. Um, but if it makes, you know, some noise and some chatter, I will. But this is pretty well supported here. I've got the whole length of that in the vise. Um, before we cut, I'll indicate it and make sure it's good and flat. But I'm pretty sure it is. And uh, you can see our marks there. That's the... It's got to stop further back than here. This is the, it has to go at least this far. So as long as I have a cutter that's less than like, I don't know, an inch in diameter, it should be good. So what it says here, you will need to mill 105 thousandths, as I would read that in my trade. So you're going to mill that from both sides of the shaft closest to the steering box housing to create a two inch long DD section. And I believe that is the uh, the flat on two so opposite sides of a shaft. I don't know why it wants me to make it two inches long and then cut it to one and a half. I would just do it all in one whack, but um, I'm also not doing it quite the way they want to do it. What I've got here, fresh out of the wax, is an end mill that's been reground a lot of times. Feels relatively sharp. It's carbide because it's really heavy. Um, as you guys can tell, a lot of my machining is improvised on what do I have laying around here somewhere that I can use. Well, this old cutter, it's been sitting in that drawer for uh, might be a year, might be 20 years. I don't know. We're going to see if it works, and if not, we'll find a different one. But we only have to go in 105 thousandths. And uh, this cutter should be plenty strong for that. We're not going to do it all at once. We'll go in and over and out and in and over and out a couple times. See what the cutter's capable of. I don't know what that steel is in there. Um, being it looks like it was cut with a sawzall when he took it out of the car. It's probably not super hard. Let's see what we get into. The Indicol is on there. An Indicol is the... Official name of it, this is an Anytime Tools brand indicator holder for a mill. These are super handy whether you're running CNC or Bridgeport. Um, they fit on Cat 40 tooling, I know, because that's what the mills I use the most at work have. I know they work on that and anything smaller. They will fit right on the base of your uh, R8 collet holder in your quill of your Bridgeport. Okay, so... I want to make sure I'm on the peak of that, which I'm zeroed out on the peak of that, which I just happened to pick the center. Get you guys focused in on that. Then I will crank this. And I wish I had power feet on this thing. Now, remember, we went from steel to on the paint. It's going to be a little higher. So we're out two and a half thousandths. I'm going to zero out my X. And go back to where I started. And most of that looks like paint. Because most of that was just a big ramp right there. And that was over 2.267 inches. So if we call that two and a quarter. We're out two and a half thousandths over two and a quarter inches. For what this is, it's fine, especially being that we're not doing anything depth-wise this way. The cutter could be sticking clear out the bottom and really be cutting deeper on one side. And because I'm going to cut one side, pick up, move over, cut on the other side, it's really not going to make a difference as long as the mill's tram is straight. Which, for anything I've done with this, it's been good enough and should be good enough for this project. If this was actually a, a high-tolerance part, not a... Yeah, I'd do it close enough. Uh, I would go through and check it because you never can be sure unless you're the only one in your shop. But uh, it, it'll be good enough for this. And I'll, I'll check it as I go along with calipers and make sure that it's not goofed up. Actually, I'll be fancy. I brought my micrometers. I can use those and make sure it's cutting right. So I've got it taped up and protected. I added a jack screw into the back of there. So it's not going to move as much, hopefully. 
Got my cutter. I've got my numbers. I think it's time to fire up the phase converter and get cut. Nice thing here is that I've got paint, so I can go in and fuzz it with the cutter until the paint disappears without cutting into the metal too much, and I'll have a pretty accurate number to start with. Now you can see I've got that line on the cutter. That's the red paint. I'll go ahead and set a zero. There's Y zero. And I won't set X zero until I figure out how long I'm making this with my radiuses and stuff. So I've got one pass, touched off, I went in about 15 thousandths and cranked along nice and slow at 1000 RPM on the spindle and it left a real good finish, didn't make any bad noises and uh, seems to be cutting pretty decent, I'll bet you it's pretty soft. And I went one inches, uh, 208, one inch two, 208 for my uh, length on that. And I'll probably go a little further in both directions just to make sure it cleans up at the bottom of the radius. But uh, I'll be, I won't be won't be able to take near as much as I take deeper and deeper cuts because it's getting wider or taller of my cut the further into the circle I go. But uh, I think this should be pretty easy. So, I'm going to check what I'm doing here one way. So the shaft was, let's see, 749 when I started. So this, there's the 7, and then that's 725. That 750 would be if it was at zero, but we're one shy. So it's uh, 749. Let's see where I'm at now. We're at 7, 14, and my deepest cut was 36 thousandths, was the second pass. So, you do 14 plus 36, what do you get? 50. <clears throat> so we're within a thousandth of where we should be so i think we're okay to keep cutting as far as being square and stuff they don't really need to be they just need to be parallel because we're working off the tangent of a round so it's it's going to be okay and uh we'll do some time lapse So I'm going to double check myself again. My deepest pass was 81 thousandths. We can do some math here and figure out that we we're at 6, so it's 6.50. So it'd be 670, but we're minus a thousandths on that. So we're at 669. 
and it was 81. That works out. So. So I got the front side done and then off camera I did the back side and finished the front side. The back side is a lot tougher because you can't see it. So if you ever have to do something like this, do the side you can see first, usually, is a good bet. Uh, now, I have to cut this off and fit it onto the shaft, or just fit the shaft onto the universal. Now, I find a set of snap gauges and check the universal. It's checking at 612 for the diameter, or I guess the width of the flat that this is contacting. Doing the math, it should come out to 540 if I take 105 off both sides. Um, must just be some clearance built into it, I guess. It seems like a lot to me. Or uh, maybe maybe the snap gauges are junk because they might say Harbor Freight on them. Um, I don't know. So, best thing at this point, make sure it fits. Make sure it's going to work. And uh, we'll go from there. So that worked perfectly to be able to machine that while holding on to that and then cut it off. Let's see if I got to figure out an alternate plan here real quick or if that's just going to slide right on there perfectly. So, you guys think I did it right? There is some play on there, but I followed what the print said. And I followed what uh, the guy I'm doing it for said. He said he wants it to be a, a a loose fit, not a press fit. And that I'd say that's pretty good. And as soon as you tighten that up, like I just put a little bit of tension on that, and it's good. Now, what I'm looking at here is my shaft might be a little too long. Just a hair. But that's something you can adjust when you get there, I'm going to check it compared to what it says out of curiosity. Let me pull my tape off and uh, see with uh, see how close I am to hitting that inch and a half they wanted. I don't know if that was inch and a half sticking out of the box or if that was inch and a half from I'm not sure where. I don't know. But uh, as far as the fit, I'm very pleased with that. As far as the machining of it, it went really nicely. It sawed pretty well too, other than it wanted to spin, so I had to clamp it real tight. And uh, now I can add a piece of uh, 65 Mustang steering shaft to my possibility pile. Cool. So it says two inches and then trim it to the final of inch and a half. So if we're going from the face of the box, We're at uh, inch and seven eighths there. If we're going for how much DD shaft or whatever they called it, they wanted an inch and a half total of DD shaft. We're just shy of that. We're about inch and three eighths. But judging by the fact that it slides on to the point where it won't pivot this anymore. It's got enough shaft, and it tightens up good. I think we're all right. And uh, worst comes to worst, if it doesn't line up for him, he can trim this back a little bit with a sawzall or a grinder or something. But uh, I think uh, I think that's going to do it for this video. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you're. Uh, machinist or tool and die maker or something of that nature where you cut metal and uh, cut it specifically to certain sizes. Uh, let me know how you would have done this and uh, what you would have done differently. Thanks for watching guys and uh, see you in the next one.